Another escapade in the life of the jackass. Are likes authentic? Red free. Jackass is the kind of guy that you probably noticed around your office. Not content with being successful in his own right, he always figures the political angle into most things he does. On this one occasion, he figured it wouldn't hurt his career to invite his big boss up to his cottage for the week to get in some fishing and quiet time, a little drinking and some storytelling. Probably to Jack S's amazement, the boss accepted. Just the two of them, Jack figured, and no one to run interference between he and the boss. Jack S would have this whole week to impart some of his wit and wisdom, create that great impression that could have a meocuric impact on his career. Now, to really appreciate this story, you'd have to meet Jack S's boss, since that's impossible for most of you. The description following may give you a sense of what he was like. God forbid, remind you of someone in your own work world. Tony, Tony O'Lawless was a no-nonsense sort of guy, a sergeant major type whose precise and proper manner had everything under control, including the minuteness details of everything his subordinates did. His clipped British accent fired out rapid machine gun orders that would be to follow were to be followed to a T, including business meetings that started at 6.30 a.m without regard to where you lived or how long your commute was. And God forbid, if you were late. Protests about these early morning meetings always brought the same no-nonsense response. The meeting would start at 6.37, old chap. I don't care if you live in Timbuktu. Anyway, Jack Ass and the boss arrived at the public dock. Tony O opting to drive both up in the comfort of his Jaguar limo. Jack S started his boat to warm it up for the eight mile trek across the lake to his water access cottage. While he and Tony O were loading the boat, the motor conked out. No problem, thought Jack, as he once again hopped into the boat and proceeded to fire it up. No luck. His repeated attempts ran down the back. What a start to the impressive th time I'm showing the boss, Jack thought. The motor's dead, Jack S. responded apologetically to Tony O. I guess we'll just have to sit in your jag until a cottager comes along and can help us out. Maybe we can borrow a set of booster cables and some tools and we'll take the battery to your car and boost the boat. Jack S. and the boss sat in the comfy confines of the Jaguar for what seemed like hours waiting for assistance to arrive. Jack S. had not considered that this was a week in June when most sane cottagers forgo the pleasures of the cottage, leaving the place for the hordes of black flies that inhibit the north at this time of year. No doubt Tony O was impressed with Jack S's wit and wisdom during the wait. Not used to waiting on anything, he probably wished he was back in the familiar surroundings of his Callanton Hills horse farm. Finally, at about 11 p.m., a motorist came down the cottage road, a young lady all alone. Hardly the kind of help Jack S. was looking for. Without a blink, however, 
jackass hopped out of the Jag asking, Excuse me, miss. You don't have a set of booster cables with you, do you? My pal and I are stranded and can't get to the cottage. Our battery's dead. Sorry, I don't have any booster cables. Wish I could help. You can, Jack Ass replied. My pal and I would really appreciate a lift to my cottage. Well, okay, responded the trusting Les reluctantly, realizing that cottagers always helped others in distress. Where's your cottage? It's about eight miles down the east arm, said Jack Ass. Where's yours? Well, I'm down the west arm and don't know your part of the lake, especially in the dark, answered the trusting lady. Why don't I take you down to my cottage? At this, at this comment, Jack's imagination swung into his wildest dreams, both at once forgetting about his battery and about his boss. Once I get to my cottage, he continued, you can borrow my boat and return it in the morning. Really appreciate your help, Jack S. responded, slightly embarrassed at his misinterpretation of the earlier remark. Jackass and Tony O piled all of their stuff into the aluminum boat that was already burdened and climbed in for the long trek. Reaching the Good Samaritan's cottage and helping her alone unload, Jackass and Tony O continued the journey to Jack's cottage, reaching it shortly after 1 a.m. Getting up early the next morning, Jackass and Tony O traveled back to the public dock with some tools to fetch Jack S's boat. Jumping into the boat, Tony O said, Let me have a look, Jack. Within seconds, he had diagnosed the problem as he held up Jack S's fuel line, which was disconnected from his motor, exclaiming, You know, I hate wasting time, Jack. And to think we wasted hours over this. Needless to say, Jack S. did make a big impression with his boss. It wasn't, however, the kind that he wanted to make. No doubt, Tony O. went home thinking of Jack S. as Jack S. And Jack is still waiting for that mercurial break in his career. <laughs>